Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm joined by the All-Star support. And Mithy, well, you guys turned it back around from game one. Were you worried at all after, honestly, getting crushed in one to turn it back for three? I was worried a little bit after game one um, because we had not played against like style before. Like not, yeah, especially not on stage. So it was really surprising. And I think we had the right draft on game one. Like we proved it on the second game, but we just kind of like made a mistake and then they like just like snowballed through us, so. Yeah, what do you think about this lightning animal style that it's been coined from Fnatic? Do you think this is something that's going to start being adapted by other teams? Um, I think it's... Uh, Honestly, I, don't, I wouldn't call it animal. I think there's like a, a lot of thought be, behind what they do. Um, but yeah, I think like you can adapt to it. And it's like, I think if you play good, their style doesn't work. Like if you, if, if you're, if you play good, then their, dra like their drafts and stuff, like it gives you an advantage early game that you can like snowball through and you have like better win conditions that they do, but they kind of like just do a lot of uh, like random stuff that catches you off guard and forces you to make a mistake, so it kind of works out. But I feel like if teams get stronger and like more consistent, their style will become like worse. Yeah. Yeah, and, and throwing you guys off guard is something that hasn't really happened that much in the European LCS. G2 has been you know famous for being at the top pretty much consistently. You guys hadn't lost a split or a series until up against Rocket in Week 10. Do you think that loss and then now this Fnatic experience has like helped you guys become a better team? Well. Um, the rocket loss definitely helped us because we had like a four week uh, period where I think it was four weeks, yeah, where we were like actually all very demotivated and like burned out and just in general like didn't really like have the drive to be super good. Like we had it at the start of the split, but we kind of like reached a slump and it wasn't really like a gameplay slump, but more of a like the way we approached training and stuff, there was not really anything to play for because we were already like qualified. Like we were already first place like four weeks in, you know, like after IEM and everything, we had like zero losses. So I guess like that kind of, especially with how much we were working on everything, kind of like put everyone in like a burnout period for a second, you know, and we kind of like just like brought ourselves together and the rocket loss even helped us out because everyone's chip was like, okay, now it's time to try hard again, you know, and it, I think it was good, yeah. That's definitely a time to turn things around. You guys are heading to a finals and, you know, Mithy, for you, this is actually going to be your fifth trip to the LCS finals, going all the way back to your time on Lemon Dogs. What's different for you this time? What feels different? <laughs> actually, yeah, I haven't really uh, not gone to a final since I ever played, since I played on LCS, so that's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't think there's, I mean, the difference doesn't really come from like now and then. It's more like now everything is just so much more professional and teams just work harder and are more prepared and or just not harder because we played a lot in Lemon Dogs, but we just like work better, you know, like we practice better and everything. So I think just like time has like made me mature more and league has also matured too. So that's the only thing that's really changed. Mm, things improving, always getting better. And, you know, speaking of improvements, the two opponents that you could possibly face up against Misfits or, or, or uh, Unicorns of Love are both looking pretty hot right now. Who do you think you'll face in the finals? Um, I don't know really. I, I, honestly, I thought Misfits was going to lose to Splice and then they 3 2 came back. So I'm never going to count Misfits out anymore. Um, I think Unicorn's style is a little bit like Fnatic. Uh, not this, they don't play the same way, but they have like the same kind of thing where if you play consistently good, you are able to beat them. Uh, so um, I, I don't know. Like I, I don't know who's going to win, but like, like I said before, I, I think I saw it in an interview. Like, if I don't win, I don't really care. You know, if I like, if I lost now or I lost in the finals, you know, we we want to go to MSI and like have one more chance to like just do well internationally, and that's what we're fighting for. Opponent doesn't matter, and eyes on the prize. Well, I have one last question for you, Mithy. You've been very outspoken. The whole team has, and how much you guys need the fan support to kind of keep on moving and get motivated. Do you want to say anything to those fans in the G2 Army? Well, um, just like looking at it from my perspective. Um, I feel like, uh, okay, let's word this properly, okay? <laughs> uh, I feel like G2 has made like a lot of bad decisions, like for example, MSI and like our performance at Worlds was not good uh, and so on. And also like Luca being outspoken and just like things hasn't gone like very well for us, like our interaction with the fans, right? But at the end of the day, um, we are the European team that like, like w one of the most like important European teams right now in terms of like performance, right? And it would be nice if just everyone gave us like the shot of like like the trust to like just believe in us, you know, because we are really working really hard and we are putting like the most effort we I have ever put in to like just like 
prove that I'm like that we can do well internationally and I have well in, done well internationally before but I think just like having the moral support of the fans behind us and not like having people laughing at us when we're actually like working hard for you guys to just like make you guys proud you know it would be nice that's that's really all well I think if you have to ask me you've absolutely earned it so I hope you see more of that coming through the future and thank you for taking the time congratulations Mithy thank you all right we'll see these guys in the finals for now though we're gonna hand it off to shocks and crew for the post game lobby Thank you very much, Pyra, and welcome indeed, everybody, to the post game lobby where I'm joined by Andrew Vetti's Day Amazing and, of course, G2's Victoria's mid laner and player of the series. Perks, congrats, man. Nice. Nice, <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, good series, good series. Um, super, insight super insightful interview there with Mithy, and I thought it was really nice the fact that he kind of said, well, hey, it would be nice to get some support because we are standardly delivering and doing well. So, how do you reflect on your performance today and turning things around after that game one? Oh, uh, well. My performance today was, I think, pretty good. It's just in game one and two, I was a bit lost because it was the first time I ever played against this kind of style where their whole family is going mid. Like, uh, <laughs> they have a soul who is always pushing and they have an early game jungle at least and uh, Gragas wants to dive me on every wave and they have a Twitch with stealth and they have any flashing with stun and I just don't, I didn't know really, like, I couldn't really do much against it and they have come prepared, like, with the strategy of on a swapping level one or whatever, so I, I don't know like what, what is all that for, from, but uh, yeah, I think my performance was also today good besides the early games where I felt a bit lost. Uh, in the beginning of the split, you actually commented that you personally were also focusing on different things this split, you know, not tilting as much and treating the game differently. Has those three coaches and your system helped you in this scenario, the team after that game one? Uh, well, I would say yes, but I would not say I was ever like a a tilter or something. I think maybe I was just uh, kind of choked on world stage, like really choked under my pressure of mm -hmm. my own expectations. Uh, I, I don't actually tilt after losing games on, in series or whatever. I was really calm after game one today, even though we got 19-1. And <laughs> I couldn't believe it a bit. <laughs> but uh, I would say that my experience from last year as a player, I've been playing 11 months in a row, so I've been through wins and losses, and also the additional stuff to the team combined with my experience has made me grow as a player and a person a lot. So uh, I think that this split was definitely an uprise again for me and will only keep going up, I think. Yeah, uh, well, obviously, Mitty said it as well. You don't care about second, third or fourth. You want to get to MSI and get another chance to prove it. And you guys took a big step towards that today because you won a series against Fnatic 3-1 to one and secured a spot in the final next Sunday. Uh, amazing. He's sitting next to you. But <laughs> what did you think in general of G2's performance and resilience in the series? I actually like that they adapted to uh, uh, Fnatic's pace side because like, if you really haven't played against it at all in scrims whatsoever, um, the games of that kind of caliber, like that kind of early game, can really ca not just catch you off guard, but actually just completely upset you and like uh, force you into a defensive mode. But I think that D2 uh, like partially adapted, but still kept kept their own like style and kept their own integrity in intact. So it was really impressive. Uh, and I wonder from you, Perks, because when you are put in this sort of a situation where you see all these interesting things, you have all these random champions thrown at you and you do have so many people showing their love towards you in the mid lane. What, how does communication go within the team? How do you adapt from series to series? Because it did seem that through each game you just got better and better and better. Well, we, we realized the style is like that, so we just decided to ban Soul, which is kind of like a... Um, you can't do anything against the champ, basically, if enemies have like those ganking champs, so he can always push and you have to respect that. They can always gank you because you can just ult and then if you play a mobile champ like Orianna or Syndra you get ulted from half a uh, lane and you basically just die because you can't do anything and um, so I have to respect that and after that I felt like really useless and mid lane control was non-existent so we just had to change the ban and we all realized which champ it was and it was Sol. I mean it's also partially Elise but um, yeah I think Cups performed well in Sol so. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Caps in general. We heard from a lot of mid laners on the desk here that mechanically he is very strong and obviously he's a rookie, but how do you see him progressing uh, in the summer split and maybe beyond that? Uh, well, I think as of now, like he's just a really talented player. Like he has really good mechanics and his understanding of matchups are pretty well, but um, I think he has a lot to learn like in regards of performing on stage as well as he does in s online and uh, just overall experience, um, not tilting or whatever. Uh, game knowledge, etc. Like everything that a, a more experienced player would have. But I think in like next split or 
even next year he'll be like a top tier midliner for sure. Yeah, that's what I want to comment on as well. You, you made you said often that you're going for that arc and learning more, and he's just at the beginning of that. So now it's up to him to show that he can grow. Uh, amazing. If we take a step back and look at Fnatic as a whole, obviously Broxa, but the yeah. other guys as well. Losing is, of course, not fun, but they should be able to have some pride in what they ramped up by the end of the split, or how, how do you think they will react? I, I, I think they can be pr uh, proud, for, proud about like how they progressed, because obviously that's such a bad middle of, of the split after like basically IEM came in. And recovering from that, like it takes such a toll on you like as a player, especially if you're not used to losing, which obviously like you're not used to if you're reckless, if you're uh, Caps who's new to stage two. And so as um, you're, you may be just like thinking like how can we get out of this and made out of this and may not find an answer to that. But they found an answer to that like basically uh, pray to their own gods and like pray to their own style in that case and just followed reckless. Even though he's not typically a leader, he still like kind of made a almost like shift in in the game happen and gave them an identity, which is impressive. And I think that it's worth remembering that Fnatic, as well as an organization, did say that this was an investment, right? This was. The goal was to improve as a team, to build this full European roster. And while the start may not have gone as well, there's a possibility that this team can still get top three in Europe. So as a first split with a brand new team coming together, I think that's a pretty significant achievement. Definitely also have a chance to hear from one of the Fnatic members himself. Soaz is standing by with Pyra, or the other way around. All right, thank you very much, guys, taking a segue here. And so as it's unfortunate you guys couldn't pull out the win today, but you started incredibly strong. And in all honesty, that one game looked amazing on its own. What do you feel about your performance today? How do you, how do you feel about overall play? Mm, well, game one was, was good in terms of uh, communication and all, all the game went for us, obviously. Game two was pretty good too, uh, a start and stuff, but I just felt like... We didn't know how to push the lead and we failed to push it sort of. Like when we died on, on top lane uh, as two and then we, we kind of threw our lead and we didn't look too much for opportunities and stuff. And after game two, it just went downhill and we just, it just didn't feel like we communicated too much. We didn't uh, use Shen very well. Uh, besides like the last game, the last game was pretty good in terms of like, playing with Shen, but first game with Shen was pretty bad. We didn't communicate very well around it. So I think game, the first two games were good, but kind of kind of bad. <laughs> well, you can't always have it in a best of five series. And it looks like a few communications still lingering, but the growth for Fnatic has been honestly pretty phenomenal over the last few weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with what's happened over the course of the back half of the split? Um, well, it, it would have been nicer to, to go to the finals, obviously. I think we, if if we are not facing G2, we would have most likely make it to the finals, in my opinion, and get a final against G2. Uh, so it was a bit unfortunate that uh, we had to face them on, on semis. Um, but expectation, uh, it depends on the weeks, you know. Like sometimes you, you feel good and you feel like you can do more, and sometimes you're a bit... Uh, your per, like screams are a bit shaky and stuff, so you don't really know what to, to what, what to expect from from LCS or anything. So I guess like beating HUK was kind of uh, unexpected for for everyone. So it was so it was pretty good in the end. Like it would have been nicer to do more, obviously, but it it was it was an okay split, I guess. Fair enough, and you know you guys will have a whole another one in summer. And as we were saying on the desk, it's possible you guys can be a top three team heading into the World Championship. Do you feel like you guys can make it there, given your current performance? Mm, I think I think we can, but we need to like we know how to play this sort of style, but we need to like we need to do more and practice more stuff and and try to be able to to play the the right way, like like G two does sort of, you know. So it is good that we can play this style, but it, it's. It would be also be good if we if we can do more than just this. Well, we'll see how you guys evolve as you go. It's been a pleasure to watch, and thank you for joining me, Soaz. Thank you. All right, well, that's an insight from us. We're going to head back over to the desk to take a look at it further. Thank you. A nice insight from Soaz there. And uh, yeah, as anticipated, 
of course, not entirely happy, but seeing the fact that they improved as a good point. Uh, but after G2's win today, there is just one spot left up for grabs in next week's championship match. Tomorrow, we will have the Unicorns of Love going up against Misfits. So first, let's talk about who might possibly win that matchup. Amazing, I want to start with you because I have the feeling you have some str uh, strong feelings about that matchup. I really, really, really don't think Misfits should have made it, like, in Splice. So... Uh, I really think that Misfits will be destroyed by Unicorns because Unicorns is so good at playing like the meta still like and actually like understanding what the enemy is doing but creating counterplays to it so they're actually at the spot earlier than the enemies at every point so I expect them to read Misfits like a book and beat them 3-0 or 3-1. That is Wow, cool. well personally that I think that there's going to be uh, the, uh, the jungle matchup is going to be one of the exciting ones seeing how well uh, the rookie of the split Cersei does up against uh, Kakao. We've seen a lot of Differing opinions on Gakao, depending on what he can play, he brought a lot of Rengar out with some mixed success, but it does certainly seem that a lot of it also revolves around the success of those mid laners, Exile and Power of Evil. All right, Perks, what do you think? Uh, I wouldn't underrate Misfits, and I wouldn't underrate Unicorns either, so I think it's going to go to five games either way. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have like a plan prediction, it's just that. I think that both Misfits and Unicorns are actually strong teams with uh, obvious uh, flaws, like somewhere. Like Unicorn's Miller sometimes is kind of on and off, and uh, it's gonna depend mostly on his performance, whether his team makes it or not. That's what I think. All right, well, we'll see if that happens. Now, we have been speculating, of course, um, which of these team styles, if any, beat G2 in a final, and the Unicorns of Love quickly come up because you think that they can also, as said uh, by Amazing, play the standard and then adapt to whatever is thrown at them. So I kind of wanna go down the line, maybe starting with Perks and say, okay, a Unicorns or a Misfits. Is there a chance that they beat you? Because that is the question. You haven't been beaten until now for three splits, uh, two splits, rather. Well, if we were to be beaten, I think it would be against Unicorns or Misfits because us and Misfits play this kind of the same style. Just that I would say that we have a lot stronger laners. Yeah. Uh, last time we faced them, it, yeah, it, uh, it went good for us. And I think Unicorns have like more aggressive approach on every lane and they can throw us off guard with different picks and uh, just their, their playstyle. I think, I think if anyone has a chance, it's Unicorns or Misfits, yeah. No. I think that the, well, I, I think, uh, I think he makes a great point. I think that Unicorns of Love play a better version of Fnatic uh, style. I think that they, they are more refined with their picks and while they are creative, they better understand how to use them. That could catch G2 off guard, but regardless, I think it will definitely be an uphill battle for whoever comes through the other semi-final. Wow, well, will it be that much of an uphill battle, do you agree? Or I, I, don't, I don't know, like, I mean, it really depends on how good Unicorns really is, because, I mean, uh, as both, both people said, you know, I, I agree with that Unicorns is probably like the one that's gonna be able to upset G2 if anything. Uh, simply because Misfits is so standard in that play and like basically weaker than G2 on lanes and in play in general too, that Unicorns, if they refine that playstyle a bit more and they're actually able to to really like play the map similar to how G2 is able to play it while creating like something like similar like advantages to Fnatic that they did in the early game, I think they sh could do it. But it's only in those cases. Yeah, and it must be nice to hear people talking about well, like who could do it because everyone's regarding you guys as, as the strongest team in the race. Well, sometimes. it's nice and it's not nice because it puts a lot of pressure. Like it's for us for a whole year, a year and a half, it's always that G2 has to win. Or oh, Europe is so bad because we failed at Worlds. So uh, Europe is so bad, G2 is so bad, uh, every other team is just worse, you know. So <laughs> it's kind of sad to see that how people think of our region. And I want to go to MSI just to redeem myself and the whole team. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you bring up a good point. You, you can't win, actually. You can't win because you have that kind of burden of not doing good internationally I mean, so far. If you win domestically, well, the region sucks, so it must be a hard thing to, to work against. Uh, well, it's fine because it's all in your mental anyways. Like, you just you don't have to put so much, too much pressure on yourself and just prepare for the worst, too. Like, it's not end of the world if you lose, uh, but you have to have the strive to win no matter what. So it's kind of like a... a mind battle, I mm -hmm. would say, and uh, it's, it's kind of fun, yeah. I, I, like, I, like the, uh, I like this situation right now. Yeah, it's, it's nice to, to watch you guys, and we'll see if you go to MSI what you can do, but I just want to ask you finally maybe, are you excited to go to that arena in Hamburg to play in front of that big crowd again and, and show what you got? How important is that to you? Uh, I really want to visit Hamburger, like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love to travel over the, over the world. It was like my dream when I was a kid, so uh, I want to visit as many cities as possible. And 
I want to play in front of 5,000 people again, or I don't know how much it will be, but it's always nice when you make a play and everyone goes like, woo, yeah. <laughs> and everyone is like clapping and stuff. And yeah, it's an awesome feeling, and I can't wait to play against, again in finals. Yeah, great arena and Hamburg, a fantastic city as well. So we'll be excited to see you guys there, and we'll see who you'll be up against. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. Perks Amazing and Vettius, of course, after this semifinal. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for our second semifinal between Misfits and the Unicorns of Love. Our coverage of that series starts at 5 p.m. Central European time, summertime, that is. Don't be late. See you! Today we can show them that bots do not bleed. Oh, flashes? The strangle falls is available for Jesus. Look at the damage from the spray and pray. Luffy goes down. Double kill fanatic. All right, all right, no flash, no flash. Nice. Double, 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 double,